thank you uh, for the nice introduction and thank you uh, for having me uh, here today. Um, yeah, this has been a wonderful set of talks. I really enjoyed it. Um, lots of detail on how to do uh, the annotations with, uh, with HGD libraries. Um, so I would like to uh, talk about an HED schema library. And um, just to give a little bit of, uh, of background, um, this the reason why we are so interested in these types of standard annotations is because we want to integrate multimodal human brain data. We're interested in understanding different aspects of brain function. And by integrating all these different modalities from fMRI, EEG, IEG are specific things that we're working on, but other people use, for example, multi-electrode arrays or MEG, um, all have different data structures. And that makes it really complex to integrate the data. And if we use with similar data structures, it suddenly becomes much easier because wherever I'll be storing a, you know, an event type or a type of um, you know, what the sampling frequency was, it will be much easier to integrate these types of data. Or for example, what type of seizure a patient had during uh, you know, an EEG or an intracranial EEG recording. And so to give a little bit of background, um, I first want to introduce uh, or like give a little background about the, um, the BIDS work that we did to extend BIDS to intracranial EEG in particular. And then um, it becomes much clearer why it's so essential to also do like an, these HED tanks and, um, uh, and specifically an HED uh, schema library. So when we were starting, um, uh, work working with these different types of data, and especially when we're integrating those data across multiple different institutes, we had to come up with a simple format or structure in which we're sharing fMRI, intracranial EEG, and EEG data. And for fMRI at that time, the brain imaging data structure was just being developed um, by uh, Russ Poldrex lab, and in particular by Chris Gorolowski. And when I spoke to them, um, there are several basic principles within the brain imaging data structure or BIDS. And one of those is that it's a shared data structure is for neuroimaging data. It's a folder structure that's very um, uh, simple to understand for most users. It's based on how most labs just practically structure their data. Um, and it is um, uh, both machine and human readable. And that was something that was very important to us because we worked with a lot of clinicians, for example, and if we're going to wrap our data in a very complex um, format with fMRI data that they cannot like load it anymore, it becomes really difficult to collaborate with your clinical partners. So we want everything to be both machine readable so that we can efficiently process our data as well as human readable. So that people can just look at a for example, one of the TSV event files and exactly see what happened there. And so that even like lab technicians can also add notes in such files. The other thing that was important about BIDS is that it's designed such that it fits most use cases. It's really designed to fit the most common use cases, not just like 20%, but like about 80% of the use cases should fit within BIDS. And even if you have some more exotic data, the BIDS principles often still apply and you can still, for example, do an extension proposal to make sure that it fits your data. And so when, um, uh, when we were talking about that, they, for example, explained how BIDS is for raw data. So it's not for DICOM data that come off the scanner. DICOM data are considered a source. And raw data, that's the, you know, the raw data, that's what you work with for your analyses, which in the case of fMRI is, for example, a nifty file. The other thing is that um, there was a, there's a, there was already a large you know a community involved from developers from Brainstorm, Fieldtrap, EEG Lib, Lab, SPM, AFNI, Amertrix, or FreeSurfer, um, developing different apps to process data. And there's many online data sets available um, with Open Neuro hosting um, already. 542 data sets. This was about a month ago, uh, with many different participants. So it's not just something that is a niche kind of for a very small group of people. It's actually a large group of people who are contributing to this. So it's a community effort. It's not just something, and that was that spoke to us because we thought like, you know, and then Chris told me about the fact that the MEG community 
um, was already developing a bids extension. So we thought, why not? And together with uh, Chris Holtgraf uh, from UC Berkeley, we extended the intracranial you know, the bid structure to also fit EEG data. And at the same time, we closely collaborated with the EEG extension such that most of the um, terms used in different descriptions match and that you can easily describe both EEG and intracranial EEG data. And there's just small differences between those um, that make sure that all the, um, all the uh, features are appropriately described. And there's currently, for example, an extension proposal to extend bits to uh, multi-electrode arrays. And so what does BIBS look like for an intracranial data structure? I mean, I can show you, you see this kind of folder structure with a lot of different files on the left, but what do those files allow you to do in an automated fashion? I mean, one of those is that you can plot a time series. You can just have the time series of a certain segment of data. The other one is that you can pull, start pulling out events. So you know which stimulus was shown during specific time periods. And now you can even add head tags that describe those stimuli in a more informative fashion. The other aspect that's in the data is that we can also have electrode positions described in a standard way, and we know which space they are in, so we can easily just render a brain with electrodes from every individual subject that participated in the experiment. And then there's also options to store additional data, such as, for example, an x-ray or an operative photo. And if you want to learn more about BIDS, the BIDS website has a lot of information. And then there's a starter kit if you want to start organizing your data in different formats. Here's some of these links. Um, but the one that I would like to point out primarily is um, also the extensions. Because if you can't actually extend the data structure, if there's something in BIDS that doesn't fit your data yet, or you have a new data type, you can propose an extension. And the community generally is very supportive of helping other people extend bits such that we can all start collaborating. Um, and it's easier to share data and make it usable for other people. So with that background um, about bids, and the next question that actually very was very important for us in particular um, was that, now that we can share these data with the basic information for an experiment, we also need to actually, we wanna share more of our experimental expertise there and start more annot and annotate more data because you, know, you can easily see that there's milk and a cookie on the screen, but it doesn't really tell you what type of milk is that. Might be almond milk, might be oat milk, might be whole milk there's no way to see what type of milk that is. And is that a chocolate chip cookie? Probably, but you may want to have more details. And if you have to look up that, info, that type of information in a readme file, it becomes really difficult to um, automatically process that because one person might say milk, the other person might add more information. I'll call it two PC milk for 2% milk. You don't know. And so with some of the EEG data features that we wanted to start adding to the data that we're collecting, for, for example, eye blink artifacts for EEG, motion artifacts, so even some of our intracranial data have artifacts when from people move a lot and the cables get switched, but, you know, start moving around. Epileptiform activity, such as interictual activity during the experiments, or for um, seizure uh, process for seizure processing, or people with interest in epilepsy, you want to actually be able to annotate what type of seizure people had at which time. Such as you can start developing tools to um, uh, to machine learning tools, for example, to predict seizures on multiple data sets, not just on your own data, but also on data for other people. Sleep stages were something that people want to add. And how to share that part of scientific scholarship is a difficult problem. And it came up during one of the bids extensions that people wanted to start to find ways to add annotations to the data in a standardized fashion. And that's a complex 
thing to discuss because if everybody would use different terms for these, there might be a standard way to add annotations, but then you still don't have to use the same term. And machine learning tools just require the use of this a similar terminology. And that's where the hierarchical event descriptors or AGD schema libraries came in perfect. And so we joined this working group um, with uh, you know, Tal um, taking the, the lead on this um, and together with uh, a lot of help from, uh, from Kay Robbins and Scott McCaig, uh, we started uh, putting together um, the schema library. Also, um, it's important to note that there's a lot of, um, you know, a lot of community help from this. From example, from uh, Pedro Valdez Sosa from the Global Brain Consortium, from clinicians, uh, Sander Maniski, who originally developed the SCORE library, as well as clinicians um, at the Mayo Clinic. Um, who annotate um, EEG data on a regular basis, as well as uh, several developers. And so when we were thinking about how to, what kind of AGD schema library, um, that is what, what the uh, advantages was of an AGD schema library, that's a specialized vocabulary um, that to expand the base schema with field specific terms. It has to adhere to the AGD design principles, can be validated, and it's also adopted within bids as a standard way to describe events. And from, uh, from when I talked to Scott, he had already talked to some of the people on the team, like uh, Pedro Valdez Sosa, to uh, use SCORE, which is a standard computer-based organized version uh, for to report EEG, uh, types of EEG activity. For example, modulators and procedures, sleep stages, interictal findings, um, EEG artifacts, um, just some examples. And they had this really nicely described in several um, main and several basic tables in a, in a paper, very well structured, and also in a commercial software package that you can use to tag data. But a commercial software package or tables are not available for most people in science or most people in out in the community. So we had to translate this into an AGD uh, library schema. And this is a brief um, snapshot from the website where you can see how we translate such a table like this into the, um, it is in the HTML view where you can see what it looks like. And we, these are the standardized terms that we can then use to tag our data. And if you want to look at the expandable HTML version and browse it in detail, you can go to this website and have a look. And so this is the um, me browsing through this website. You can see on the back uh, here on the left, you can see the different types. For example, modulators, background, sleep, interactive findings. And if you click on artifacts, you can find different types of artifact and find the standardized terms with the definition from SCORE. So this is the original definition from the SCORE paper that is used to describe these. You can also search for things like seizure. For example, epileptic seizures pops up on the top. My mouse is hovering over a different one, so you'll see a different definition here. But you can see how you can use this to browse the um, SCORE um, schema library in different ways. Yeah, epileptic seizures with subtype physiological patterns with all the subtypes that are defined by SCORE. And this is openly available so that you can browse through it and have a look and see whether it um, matches uh, the needs to describe certain data types. And so when we implement this, for example, you can think about a lot of different electrodes recording uh, from uh, recording a certain type of activity from a certain segment. You can see that there's a seizure. And during that segment in time, you can start describing that seizure with SC from SCORE, which is the way to annotate that in, um, in an um, in event file. You can see that, for example, this is a tonic um, motor onset epileptic seizure. Um, and there's other information that can be added there as well. And before you can see, for example, that there is abnormal interictic rhythmic activity and then um, that they were asleep and they woke up at the start of the seizure. There's a lot of detail that can be added using these score tags. And that's exactly what score is designed to do. And the only thing that 
we did here was to implement it in a way such that it's open and readable. And so it's important that these are usable in bids. And so in a bids events file, it has onset and duration. And you can, for example, add an AGD column that has these types of tags in it to describe what happened um, at that time or when it started and when it ended. Now you may think like all oh, these like long tags in a column may be a little bit much information. I'm only using a few. So for example, for artifact annotation, which is um, in, in the bids examples under review, we have a, um, a pull request in the bids examples repository um, that you can go to and you can see what an example, for example, for artifact annotation will look like. And here on the left, you can see the bids events file again, onset and duration. But here you see that, for example, the annotation type is only I plus musk. And you're wondering like, what does that mean? If you want to know what that means, there is an accompanying bids underscore events.json file that has the annotation type, which is the column name, well described. And so you can read here that I'm means an eye movement on horizontal eye movement artifact. An eye movement plus muscle is, for example, an um, horizontal eye movement artifact and an EMG artifact in the data. And so you can have the both both use these terms in a bids events file, or you can define a JSON file to have a more detailed description. So there's multiple ways to work with SCORE, just in a way that fits best fits a use case or a certain uh, way in which people want to um, want to describe their data. And so one of the things that is an important note here that BIDS is a community effort. So feel free to comment if this is unclear to you, or if you want to add something or ask questions, or you want to add a use case for a BIDS example, please feel free to contribute. So now that we, um, um, we want to share or incorporate and in integrate multimodal data to understand brain functions and BIDS allows us to do that from a general um, structure perspective, but now we can also start uh, use standard annotations and especially across intracranial EEG and EEG and MEG, we can use standard annotations to describe artifacts in our data and tag these with these AGD score um, schema libraries with the AGD so I showed you how you developed the AGD schema library for SCORE and it's validated and it's openly available for both scientists and for clinicians to use. They don't have to purchase software. They don't have to use um, information from a paper, from a table, which is very informative, but people might abbreviate those in different ways. Now we can do this in a standard way. And it demonstrates also the use case for future AGD schema libraries. And um, the process was actually really, you know, it was, a, it was a lot of work to go through, but the AG, AGD has the libraries, you can validate the schema library. It tells you if you have multiple overlapping terms, it makes sure that it fits the, uh, you, you do not have two terms that are too similar and that it integrates as well with the base schema. So you can use both, you can tag events with both the base schema, describing, for example, that someone knocked on the door or the radio was on at as well as the radio was on and someone had a seizure. So you can describe both external events as well as um, events that are observed in, um, in EEG data. So I would like to thank uh, all my collaborators um, from, uh, for these projects. These are large working groups um, that is uh, really exciting to, uh, to work with uh, such, uh, such great people and make sure that we have an integrated data structure to, uh, um, uh, for multiple modalities. Thank you.